there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving project, including invitations and goodie bags that also double as a place card holder, which I think is so much fun. I'm using products from our sponsor, AC Moore. You can see a smattering of them there. And if you wanna see all the products I used, stick around to the end of the video and I will do a haul of the products that they sent me. They've got some really beautiful things for fall this year. The first thing we're going to start off making today is the invitation, and this can also be used as a Thanksgiving card or even a thinking of you card. Now AC Moore has these beautiful shaker kits, which are like the easiest shaker cards I have ever made, and they have a couple themes. They have a, a maple leaf theme and also a pumpkin and apple theme. They're both so easy to use, and I'm going to show you exactly how to make them today. The kits come with a foam frame, a cardstock frame, and also an acetate window so that you can easily put together this card. And it also has a backing paper if you wanna have a white background, um, which I'm gonna show you how to use. On the card I just showed you, I actually just um, made my shaker right on the card and let the pattern paper show through. So it's up to you whichever you wanna do. And the kits also have all the goodies that you put on the inside of the shakers as well, so there's really nothing else you have to buy. You can just use it with your re regular card making supplies. Just so you could see the difference between the uh, shaker with the background pattern paper showing through and with the white backing that comes with the kit, I made an extra one and just lay that on top so you can kind of see um, the difference. So you can make it however you prefer. My best tip for making cards is to make an envelope to match first. So I cut down a 12 by 12 piece of paper from the Autumn Splendor kit from the Love Nicole line available exclusively at AC Moore and made an envelope using my We Are Memory Keepers punch board. So then I could take the scraps that are left over from this and use it to embellish my card. Also, whenever you're doing a big project like this, save all of your scraps because the tiny little dies that um, work with the little Nicole embossing machine will be perfect for cutting out little embellishments from all the scraps. I decided to use craft cardstock to make my card and I simply cut a standard eight and a half by 11 inch piece of craft cardstock in half and that'll give me two cards. So that's a very economical way to um, make a batch of invitations is to go with a standard size and that way you have very little waste. And now I'm taking um, a piece of paper that was left over from my envelope and I'm just kind of uh, holding it up against my cardstock and making a little mark with my fingernail so I know where to trim it. After trimming that and adhering it down, I took the uh, little leftover piece of that same scrap and tore it so that I would have a nice white edge on the um, edge of my cardstock. And since it's double-sided, I can use the gold side and, you know, it looks like I have two totally different pieces of paper. Now let's make our shaker element. I decided I want two of these maple leaf shakers on my card. So I peeled off one of the um, sticky back parts of my foam and I'm sticking it to the white backing piece because I decided I wanted that white paper to show through just to make my shakers look a little bit more prominent. And you just wanna make sure you line that really carefully and press it into place. I will tell you doing the round shakers are easier than doing the um, maple leaf ones, but they're both pretty easy to do. So don't let that dissuade you. Now fill the frame with sequins, microbeads, whatever you like. All of these little goodies came with the shaker kit. And then you're gently going to remove the other backing piece to reveal the sticky foam tape. Now you're gonna take the clear piece of acetate and center it up over your maple leaf. Now it's not gonna go all the way out to the edges because there's gonna be enough adhesive there left for the outside frame. So you wanna kinda of just center it so it covers up the hole in the middle so nothing can fall out. Then you're gonna take your colored frame piece and just lay that down on top. There'll be enough adhesive on the border to catch that and to uh, secure it down. And that is how you make your shaker box. I also made another one of the leaf shakers using the yellow frame. I think they're both so pretty on this card. For the sentiment on this card, I'm gonna use a combination die and stamp set exclusively from AC Moore, and it says save the date. And I'm also gonna use the little Love Nicole embossing and die cutting machine. It's so adorable. I'm gonna start off by inking up my stamp with archival ink, and that's a waterproof ink. The reason I'm using that is because I know I want to embellish this with some markers, and I don't want it to run, and I'll be using water-based markers. So after you've stamped it down, you want to give the ink a couple seconds for it to transfer from the ink to your um, piece of cream cardstock. Then you're going to lay the die down on top. Now, a top tip for this to make sure you keep your die and your um, paper lined up is to take a piece of washi tape and secure it down to the paper. So just take the time to make sure you have it lined up really well and then just 
just tack it down with a little piece of washi tape and I try to keep the tape on the die and towards the waste part of the paper so it doesn't um, affect the stamped part that I want to remain really nice. So with this little embossing machine, there's a little folder that you put your, your uh, dies in. It looks like a little embossing folder, but it's flat. And then this simple little machine just works great. You set it down, it kind of clings to your table, and you've got a little slot where you can put your uh, dies or little embossing folders through. And you can find all the accessories for this uh, at AC Moore. And also, the little machine is under 30 bucks regular price, so it's really affordable if you wanted to get into die cutting. And there you go, it lined up perfectly, and it looks so cute. For a little extra flair, I'm taking an aqua water-based marker and just adding a little bit of a shadow to the right-hand side of every uh, swoosh mark from the, uh, the stamp. So it's a quick and easy way to pull a little color into a plain old sentiment. I really love this gorgeous burlap paper that AC Moore sent me and I thought it would be nice just for a few little accents. So I took a scrap of it and some of the smaller round dies and I wanted to see what that little uh, die cutting and embossing machine could do because it is pretty small. I didn't want to want to, um, you know, force anything through it. It was fine for cutting tiny little embellishments from with the smaller dies on the burlap paper. But um, when I wanted to make some larger circles with the burlap paper, it wouldn't go through the machine. So I went and cut that on my big shot. So I just wanted to warn you if you're going to use like a thick material probably the little tiny love nicole die cutter and embosser is not the best job for that but for tiny little things it's, it works perfectly I love to use die cut and punched shapes to layer up to make interesting embellishments that don't cost a lot of money. So I'm using this maple leaf punch from Love Nicole from AC Moore to punch maple leaves out of the solid sides of these pattern papers I've been using. So save all your little scraps because they're so handy with these tiny die cuts and punch shapes. You can really get a lot of bang for your buck. And they all coordinate because they're from the same Autumn Splendor paper pad from AC Moore. So I'm just going ahead and making a bunch of little embellishments and um, I also so take the door off the back of my punch because I like to punch upside down so I can look through the window and see exactly where my punch is going to come through. So there's another top tip for you when you're making cards and using punches. Now that we have everything punched and die cut and shakeified, we can glue it all together and make our card. Now I wanted to remind you that it is not any more work to make a batch of these as it is to make one, because we do everything kind of in a series of batching. Die cut everything at once, stamp everything at once, make all your shakers at once. So um, it's definitely worth making a couple extra cards. Uh, if you don't know, if you want to make extra invitations, maybe you don't know what you want to use the cards for, leave the sentiment off and leave it as a blank card, and then you'll have it whenever you need it. The glue I'm using is zip dry glue. Um, the nice thing about that is that if you get too much um, on your paper, let it dry and you can roll it off, kind of like that um, that adhesive that they stick up mailing labels onto magazines with. It's like a roll off type of adhesive. So it's really nice if you get a little heavy handed with the glue. And I also find it works really well with these porous materials such as paper, burlap, and uh, cardstock. I'm using foam squares on the back of the sentiment to raise it up so it's the same height as the shaker elements and make it a little bit more prominent in the design. And I put a sprinkling of little glue drops all over the card so I could stick down some green sequins that came in the shaker kit as extra embellishments. You have so many uh, extra beads and sequins in the shaker kits that you'll be able to do other projects with them as well. And you can see that big old gobble glue at the top of that card. That's going to roll off with no problem. Um, I got a little heavy handed there with the glue, but uh, that's why I like the zip dry because you can roll it right off. And there you have it. Shaker cards are so much fun and they are really great to receive because they, they're just something different that you don't see every day. And it's always fun to see those sequins and glitters moving around on a card. So give it a try. I think you'll really enjoy it. Now let's move on to making our place card holder gift bags. Be sure to save your scraps from the card making project because you can use those scraps to embellish your gift bags. We're using all papers from the same pad of paper so they all coordinate and work beautifully together. So to make the gift bag, I'm using the gift bag punch board from We Are Memory Keepers, but if you don't have this or you don't want to use it, you can simply wrap and fold your paper around a small gift box and use that as a template and then just glue up the flaps just like you would if you were using a template like this. The uh, instructions on the punch board are very clear and easy to read, so um, you can refer to that if you are making the bag using the punch board. 
I recommend using a really strong double-sided tape to adhere your box together, or you can use hot glue if you're a grown-up and you're really careful with the hot glue. I don't want anyone to burn their hands off, so be very careful if you decide to use hot glue to secure your box together. The weight of this pattern paper is really nice. It's kind of like a light cardstock, and I like that it's double-sided because you can see inside of the the bag a little bit so it just makes it look a little more finished. I did make some bags with the solid on the outside but I felt like I needed to mat it with more patterned paper because it just looked too plain. Now for the strap or the handle I'm using a little piece of burlap paper and I did try cutting this with a couple different tools and I found that cutting it with plain old scissors worked the best. When I tried to cut it on my paper trimmer it wanted to fray the edges a little bit and um, I think it would really just dull out an exacto knife really quickly so just use a ruler mark how you want it to be cut how wide you want it and then just cut it out with your regular scissors and that's your best bet and I'm gonna secure that to the inside of my bag with a couple little drops of hot glue again just be very careful if you decide to use hot glue you could also use um, a brad or something if you wanted to uh, have a cold connection there's lots of things that you can put inside of these bags. For kids, you could put crayons and an activity pad, or you could put freshly baked goodies wrapped in deli paper, and that's deli paper that I have in that box right there. Um, or you could put candies, almonds, whatever you want. It really, the sky's the limit. I'll probably fill mine with uh, crayons and activity pads for the kids at Thanksgiving this year. I'm not gonna do anything too fancy for the name. I'm just going to use an Elegant Writer calligraphy pen to uh, write the names on some scraps of tan cardstock. And that's just the backside of one of the other pattern papers that we've already used. As long as you take your time and you try to make all your letters slant the same way, your calligraphy will look nice and neat. So you don't need to have to take a class or practice too much to get a nice look there. I grabbed one of the uh, nested tags from Love Nicole and I took the largest size and just put it on a scrap of aqua card stock, which is the back side of the pattern that we used for our bag. And I'm gonna use it with our little small but mighty Love Nicole die cutter and embosser. So just put that die right in the folder and crank it through. And I did use my washi tape because sometimes the, um, the paper and the die can slide apart. So you, that just helps you, save you some aggravation. And then the other cool thing about this machine is that there are tiny little embossing folders that are adorable and they're the perfect size for these little projects. So I'm just going to put this tag inside of the wood grain embossing folder and just make sure that you've got it in there centered good, basically so you don't have anything like hanging over the edge because then it wouldn't get embossed. And then I'm going to crank that through. And to make the um, embossing stand out a little bit more, I'm going to use a little bit of ink on the edges and I'm just using um, some brown uh, Tim Holtz Distress Oxide just to kind of bring out the texture on that tag. Here's a tip if you want to die cut something but you don't have the right size die. So this um, label here is a little bit too long and skinny for any of the dies I have. So I'm going to die cut it once using the top part of my die as my um, kind of template and then I am going to line it back up and use that same die to cut the bottom part. And you're probably thinking, Lindsay, why don't you just use some scissors and cut it? And you can totally do that. Um, but when you die cut, you do get a beautiful, slightly rounded over edge to your, um, your shape. So that would be the reason you might want to try that. So next time you have a die that's not quite the right size, give this tip a try. And now it's just a matter of putting everything together. I love stacking up the uh, cardstock and burlap shapes. I think the embossing adds a, just a beautiful touch to it. And because we're doing this assembly line style, meaning making a bunch at once, it really goes together quickly. And it's a great way to show somebody that you care. In fact, I use the same uh, technique to make my Christmas gift card holders. And what I do is I hang them on the tree. I make them just like this using Christmas paper and embellishments. And then I hang them on the Christmas tree with gift cards them or uh, small gifts so it keeps clutter down it doesn't impose clutter on somebody else and I get to get a gift card but also make something from the heart so um, it feels a little bit more special I think than just handing over a gift card these cute little buttons uh, fall themed buttons are just beautiful on this uh, project and they're self-adhesive so all you have to do is stick them down and then I'm attaching the tag with a little clothespin that has um, a little glittery pumpkin or glittery maple leaf on them and that way the bags can be reused if somebody has a gift to give so I love to make things that can be reused again um, because it just is more more love and caring to go around I think I hope 
you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, you can find all the supplies I used at AC More or you can check out acmore.com. I'll have links in the video description so you can get there. And um, I've had so much fun using these brand new products today. If you want to see all of the things that AC More sent me, uh, stick around to the end of this video and I will do a haul going through all of those products because they did send a bunch of things that I didn't get a chance to use today that you may find useful in your holiday crafting. I wanted to show you the supplies before I cut into them. So um, in case you're looking for packaging in the store, you'll know exactly what to look for. So here is a little die cutting die cutter. It's so adorable and very easy to use. It just kind of clings to the table. This is what the box looks like if you are um, looking for it. It's just under 30 bucks regular price. So, you know, it's a steal, especially with a coupon. But the size of it, look at that. It's about the size of my hand. Granted, I don't have big hands, but certainly a compact little rig. And I just wanted to make sure you knew where to look for it. Um, so to go with that, I got some really cool things here. And, um, oh, they also have a wonderful line of punches. And this is a maple punch. And this is great because I can, like, put washi tape down on cardstock and punch through it with this. And it has a little door on it. But I'll tell you what, I like to take the door off because I like to punch upside down and see what I'm punching through. Um, the door is really handy if you're punching a bunch from, like, a one color of cardstock and you're just kind of going to chunk, to chunk, to chunk, to chunk. And that way you can keep all of your little, um, all of your little pieces together like if you're putting together a project for your kids school or whatnot but the way I punch I like to remove the door but they're pretty easy to take off and put back on again so I just wanted to show you that really quick because that's it's just more convenient for me to work that way so their embossing folders come in two packs and um, I've got a couple here and I've got a wood grain some uh, leaves which are really pretty quatrefoil and some hearts and these are just the right size to um, emboss anything that you put through your machine with a die cut fold Folder here. So instead of having bulky plates like your bigger machine, it's got this tiny little folder, which I'm sure you saw me use in the tutorial portion. And then there's a bunch of different dies that will fit that. And there are dies, and there's also dies and stamp sets. So there's the tag set, which I've been playing with. Uh, there is a rectangle the circles and now this is a save the date and it's a stamp but it has the die cut to go with it so that's great for doing party invitations wedding invitations this one is a camera and a, a camera die and this would be really cute if you're doing scrapbooking or project life or planning i think it'd be really great this is a thank you with a, a brush letter thank you with a matching die cut and brush lettering is so popular right now this is nice because you don't have to have good handwriting and you can put that on a card and have it look fantastic there's also um, stackable ones like these little um, moths here and uh, this is really cute it's a mason jar and if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time you know that I haven't met a mason jar stamp or die that I do not love so <laughs> that could go in my mason jar collection it's sad that I have a mason jar collection really okay so I want to look at some of the embellishments and this way you can see how they come out of the package and oh I love these little these little bins are so handy just to organize my stuff um, so here we have a clothes pins. I've got a couple of these different sets. Cl glitter clothes pins and they've got pumpkins or uh, maple leaves on them. Just really cute if you want to do a little banner or close a favor bag or just put a quick decoration on something that can be reused. So the, the recipient can take this off and they could put a magnet on it and stick it on the fridge and that would be handy for holding notes or doesn't matter. There's a lot of great ways you can reuse that. Even marking a spot in your planner if you do planning. My planner is very functional it's not very pretty and cute like everybody else's but it, it does it it helps me plan my day efficiently um there's also cute buttons um these cats and spiders great for halloween but these are really useful for all of your fall themed crafts these will probably make it into my scrapbooking because um uh, these really special embellishments i like to put in a scrapbook page because then i'll always have them um, these wonderful shaker frames are a really quick and easy way to do shaker cards so you don't have to cut out and mess with the foam tape and everything. They have kits that will do it uh, all together, including even the little goodies that go inside. And uh, that's nice because it saves money. You don't have to go and buy a bunch of different things if you don't already have them. Uh, now the paper pads, I was really impressed because I had never really looked at the Nicole paper pads before. And I like the six by six size because I tend to do a lot of card making. And the nice thing is the scale on these papers are designed for card making. They're designed to use for smaller projects. So when you buy, sometimes, you know, you get the 12 by 12 paper thinking, well, I'm getting a great deal because, you know, I'm getting so much more paper, but the scale is bigger and sometimes it just doesn't work on a card. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And there are about four or five sheets of each 
I think four sheets of each pattern here. I took one of those trick or treats out already, but that, before I realized I really had to show you this before I cut it all up. Um, but a lot of really nice patterns you can mix and match for your cards because they all go together. And then this one is vintage Halloween, which I love because I'm a big Halloween fan. And um, this is actually looks just like my son's school mascot, the witches. Um, kind of cool mascot uh, but there's all sorts of great card sized prints here which also would be great to punch out one of these and put it like on a trick-or-treat bag or um, a banner or anything like that any sort of decor I love that it's such a great vintage um, vintage print this would be a nice one to have in 12 by 12 too actually if you like to do make goodie bags and make the bags out of cardstock or do home decor that would be a good one to have in a larger size so when you're thinking about what papers to get and what sizes to get, think about what you're going to use them for. Um, now, of course, uh, in addition to the pads, I'm going to share this pad with you in a second. There's also a lot of open stock papers like this is gorgeous. This isn't like fall or Halloween, but look at this gorgeous butterflies. They have like a pen and ink stippling design, beautiful colors. And then the reverse side is this gorgeous whitewashed uh, distressed wood. Um, so this will probably be set aside for some spring crafting. I just think this would be so pretty for Easter or anything else springy. Um, these fun Halloween papers are double sided, which are great for scrapbooking. Sometimes I have a hard time though, because if it's double sided, I'm like, what side do I use? They're both so cute. Something like this though, I could use like, I could cut this in half and use, you know, half to mat papers and use the other half to mat some other things so or use them on banners or like if you're doing home decor like a banner or something you can it'll be pretty on both sides which is really handy so think about that when you're doing your home decor crafting there's some really cute halloween i know not everybody likes scary halloween so it's nice to have some cute designs and um oh that's so adorable i just like and another thing that i like is that the strip here is is separate so you're not gonna have a price tag on your car on your paper or a barcode on your paper so you get to use all of that 12 by 12 space and you get an extra half inch that you would trim off later uh, the only downside to that is sometimes it's hard to store them if you have a specific like 12 by 12 tray for them but i find that fits in everything except for my um discontinued crop and style folder but again we have some more beautiful prints here i used to scrapbook with a lot of the photorealistic papers back when i first got started so that's kind of fun to see come back in style and some burlap paper which is great i think what i would do for this is use it for an accent um it would be cute to like trim some off and put it around like a mason jar if you're doing like a, a like a fall bouquet or something but i think i would like maybe try die cutting it because it is on a paper backing i think it would die cut really well and um i think i would just use bits and pieces and kind of preserve this because it is kind of more of a specialty paper now this is the Autumn Splendor pad, it's a 12 by 12 pad, and I like that this isn't 12 by 12 because I would be more inclined to do home decor with this type of paper. And the really great thing about this pad is that um, I think you get like five, four or five sheets, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, you get four sheets of each print, which is great if you're doing home decor or large scrapbooking spreads, but the back side is a coordinating solid. So sometimes you get a print that you're not crazy about, but if you've got a nice solid, you can always use that. This is my absolute favorite print. I just love this mid-century modern, um, like the colors and the graphic style of the leaves. I could see, I would love to have like upholstery like this. I would love to have my couch in this pattern. I wonder if that's possible. I've got to see if they do fabric <laughs> because I would just love to have like a slip cover for my couch or a couple pillows in that pattern. And I just love that teal color. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, and then there's some watercolor leaves, which are really popular, the watercolor trend. These are watercolor gourds. So that's a really great way to grab a trend without having to actually paint. Uh, if you don't like to paint, I like to paint, but if you don't, you can grab this watercolor trend here. And um, it's just really pretty. And I have to, I have to like shamefully admit that I've never really looked at the Nicole paper at AC Moore. I always kind of grab like my favorite brands that I always, that like I always see there, but I didn't know their house brand was so pretty and that their paper was high, so high quality. I mean, it's nice and thick. It's not chintzy thin stuff, which is also really awesome. So I just wanted to go and show you all of the stuff I got before I cut into it in case you wanted to see any of those prints in a greater detail. And if you didn't, well, you're probably already gone by now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about any of these products, you can let me know in the comments below and I'll help you as best as I can. But the best thing to do is just to head on over to AC Moore and see what your local store has in stock. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.